Okay, here we are in Excel, and we already have the workbook set up. We have our um, data here. We have some formatting done. Um, we have our descriptive statistics. We already have the QB Suite function running, so that we can evaluate against that. And then over here, this is really the thing that you're going to want most, so make sure you download it from the link in the description, the um, AI constant tables. That is huge. Um, I mean, look at that. That's just an enormous table. I highly, highly recommend downloading and not typing by hand. And then here is our Shapiro Wilk p-value table, almost as big. All right, and then a little bit more formatting. Uh, like I said, the math on this one is pretty easy. It's really the programming in Excel that's going to be difficult. So let's get started here. All right, so the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to sort our data. So we will run sort and we will select our data. So now you'll notice is that we are going to program this so we can use all the way up to 50 samples. So we're going to select the entire thing instead. Awesome, there we go. And so you'll notice that all of the zeros get placed down here. That is wonderful. And then let's also sort here. And this time we are going to sort the same array but we are going to skip that and run it backwards by using a negative one. Enter. There we go. And again, you'll see that we have these zeros down here. Um, so we won't really have to worry about that. It knows those are empty. Okay. Yi minus Y bar. So this is pretty simple. We just take Yi minus, and then we come over to our mean, and we will hit F4 to absolute reference that. Enter and let's double click and drop it all the way down but uh oh you'll notice here that we're going negative because we're subtracting it from a zero so we're gonna wanna do um, a little bit of, of logic here so we're gonna do an if statement and we're gonna say um, if I is greater than N then we are going to um, Ooh, what do we want to output? Let's just do um, let's just do a blank cell there, and we will say okay. And then we're gonna definitely want to absolute reference that that um, n value there, and double click, and there we go. Awesome. So now we are getting blank values there, and something that I'm gonna do is just. Um, open that up a little bit so we can see that we are getting values there. Now, AI, this is really where our um, programming skills are going to have to come in because we are going to have to use um, a new function you might not be familiar with, and that is called index. So we'll do equals index. And so what you do is you select an array, a row number, and a column number. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the entire Um, the entire chart, the values of the the entire values of the chart, and then so for row number, um, that is going to be our value of i because remember each row um, is a different is a different ai constant. So in there we will put in our i value, and then for column number, um, what we're going to do there is we are going to select our n value because if you remember. Um, each of these is a different n. So we'll select our n value. But what you're going to notice is that we start at um, we start at 2. So we're actually missing one. So we're going to want to subtract 1 because the values for n equals 30, let's go over and find it, is actually going to be found in the 29th column. Okay? And we'll hit enter. Um, and there we go. There is our AI value. Let's double check. So AI A1 with n equals 30, 4, 2, 5, 4. There we go. Awesome. So we can just double click and drag it all the way down. But you're going to know, oh, we forgot to absolute reference that. So make sure we do. And we'll want to absolute reference our n value. Excellent, but you're going to notice we're running into some issues here, um, and that is likely that well that is because um, we only have a total of 25 constants. So what we might want to do here is just get rid of these, um, 
And something else that we're probably going to want to do is do um, sort of what we did over here and do some, some handling on this. That way we aren't getting a bunch of zeros that could potentially throw our numbers off. So we're going to write another if statement. And for our logical test, we will say if this um, is greater than n, then we will return 0. And then else we'll return that indexed value. And let's go all the way down right there to 25. OK, wonderful. And it looks like we're running into a slight issue. Of course, we forgot to absolute reference. Absolute references are incredibly important. There we go. Excellent. And what is going on here? Ah, I see. We forgot to add the divided by 2. Because if you remember, um, we only do it halfway. So now we get the zeros. Wonderful. OK. Awesome. OK, so now we're going to do a, a little bit of math here. Not too complicated, though. So equals ai times um, the, the descending order minus the ascending i equals excellent. And we can drag that all the way down to 25 as well. And there we get our values. Everything is looking just great. OK, so now we're going to move on to this p-value column here. Um, and what we're going to do here, and actually this is a w-test statistic. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to take the sum of the squared deviation. So we'll just use the sum square of this yi minus y bar column. And we're going to want to take all the way down. Excellent. Now for b, this is where it gets a little bit more complicated, but it's still pretty easy because we've broken everything else up. This was um, sum of this column here. Awesome, awesome. All right, now w is incredibly simple equals, and we're going to raise b to the power of 2, and then divide that by our sum squared. Enter. And look at that. Our w value, 0 0.955095, matches QE suite. Excellent, excellent. So now what we're going to need to do is get these um, w1, w2, and p1, and p2 out of our p-value table. So this is going to be, again, a little more logic using that index function. Um, it's kind of fun and kind of tricky, um, but this is definitely great practice if you're, if you're trying to master Excel. So as you can see, we already have um, this set up here with the p-values. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to take um, the row here that is associated with our n value. So we're going to say equals um, index. And then our array, again, we want to pull this entire table. And this time, um, for the, the row number, we're going to take our n. But instead of adjusting it by 1, we have to adjust it by 2, because now we're starting with an n value of 3. Um, OK, so we go uh, minus 2. And we don't need a column this time because we want to return the entire array. Oh, and we have a reference value. Let's see here. Uh, let's try that. OK, yep. So even if you uh, leave it blank, you still have to throw the, the comma in there. Um, that way it knows what to do. And now it spills that entire array. Let's just double check. n equals 30.9, 3, awesome. Okay, so now we're going to do, um, we're, this is where we're going to figure out where, which of these is our W1 and W2. So to do that, we're going to, we're going to pull a little bit of a trick here. Um, it's going to be kind of cool. So we're going to say equals, and we're going to say, is this value less than, and then we're going to take our W. Okay, so is that value less than W? And let's absolute reference that. And then we're just going to drag it over. All right, there we go. So 
we found that these are going to be the inflection point. And so what we're going to do to figure out where that inflection point is and turn it into an index is we're going to say, oops, count if, and we're going to select this entire range, quotation equals true. There we go. Our inflection is four, one, two, three, four. Awesome. So let's come over here. Our W1 equals, and we're going to say index. And now we can just take this P value column, I mean row, and our row number is going to be 1, and our column number is going to be the inflection. So let's try that. We should, for W1, get 0.1. Let's see what we've got. We have 0.1. Oh, I'm sorry. This is... P1. That is P1. Now P2 will be very similar, so let's just um, paste that again. But instead, we're going to add 1 to that index. Our P2 is 0.5. Now to get our W1, we're going to do a very similar thing, and we're going to say index. But instead, we're just going to pull from this array, and we're going to say our row number is 1, and our column number is going to be our inflection. And we should expect 0.939. We got 0.939. Let's just copy that because we like to save on our, our time here. And then plus 1, and that gives us 0.967, which is um, our W2. Awesome. So now we just have to program in the linear interpolation, which is really not that bad because it equals P1 plus, and then in parentheses here, we're going to say, um, let's see here, P2 minus P1. And then we're going to divide that by our W2 minus W1. And then we're going to multiply that by our W minus W1. Hit enter, 0.329927. Awesome. This is a really fun exercise, but it's just not practical in the work environment. I highly recommend using the QE.Shapiro-Wilk um, formula. It's incredibly easy, so much easier. There is a link in the description to show you how to get your free trial because I'm not kidding. I mean, just, just look at how easy this is. QE.Shapiro-Wilk. We select our data, and we hit Enter. And in just a second, oop, didn't log me in. There we go. And in just a second, not only does it give you that, but it also gives you a normal probability plot with your A, D, R, J, K, S, and J, B all right there. Um, so, you know, this is an absolutely fun and really cool exercise. I highly recommend it. It will sharpen your skills when it comes to Excel. But in a real world environment, I highly recommend Kiwi Suite. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. And please do something awesome.